This installation video covers the XL box for most projectors. There were some minor variations on the adapter plate, which we'll cover when it's time, but uh, we'll cover all the XLs with this video. So, starting out, the, um, the XL box, this is a bracket from a 2210 uh, or 2215. Um, I've got no projector, so you can see what we're doing here, but they're all just basically the same. This carriage is the same on most XLs, so this is all we're, we're dealing with. Um, the XL box itself, now we've got to lift it up to replace the screws underneath. We do that, crank up the screw, up, the tilt screw. Doesn't have to go all the way up, you have to get, be able to get underneath the box to undo the Allen screws that are holding the plate in place. Now I've removed them already, I see silver cap screws that are in these four positions here. And what they're doing is they're holding these nylon blocks in position that the XL box slides on. Uh, this is something to keep in mind because there's two in the front and a lot of these things come out of the factory uh, and the screws got loose in transit and they've misaligned and that's why some of these things don't slide very easily. You can just reach up underneath, realign them, tighten the screws and they'll be good to go. Uh, it's nylon so don't torque on it because you'll strip it. So, we'll take it as red that I've removed these four screws. We're going to add four new longer cap screws. They have a flat washer and a lock washer on each. And we line this up visually. So our motion plate. Line the holes. And put the screws in. There we go. Okay. Now we're going to put all the screws in finger tight, as far as possible finger tight, but there's, move, there's a lot of movement to be done to be adjusted on these things as we uh, first set them up. So we, we don't snug anything down until we've done our alignment. So there's the four screws in place, which now mounts my motion plate. Now I'll be mounting my actuator plate. Now inside our actuators you can see the black T-nuts. They'll be inserted for you before they show up. Now you'll see in this one they're on three sides, not the fourth side. So you're gonna have to pay some attention as to where they go. In this case, we want one pair going down, one pair, go one pair going towards the screen, and one pair going up. So that means I have to rotate this 180 degrees. That gives me a pair up, a pair back, and a pair out. So now I can mount this properly. Separate the screw to T nuts. Now these T nuts don't sit perfectly flat sometimes, so if you're trying to put a screw through and they're not taking, you might have to wiggle the T nut a little bit. It's just a flat piece of metal that slides into these rails, and you're more than welcome to take them out and check them out, but it's just a threaded piece. But they don't sit perfectly flat every time, so. Okay. Now. These are going to mount in such a way that we want to be able to move them back from the bracket. So we want to mount them so that the 90s are inward to give us some travel backwards. This doesn't sit flush against the front, it comes back. Uh, in some cases in a projector, if you're really stuck, you can just put them on the back side and push them forward, but that's going to be a case specific thing. So now we take a long screw with a cap, long cap screw, and an eye lock, and a flat washer. Oops, don't drop that. And then the cap screw goes through from the top, washer, and then we're using nylon nuts. That's the, uh, the, the threaded nut with the actual nylon in it so that it actually stays on better. So we use those in the, uh, in the, cru in the critical points. So we'll get that one started. Long screw, flat washer, nylon. 
And now we're going to mount our motor bracket. The motor brackets face in such a way that the steep angle goes towards the, where the motor mounts, not the 45. So they just mount with a flat washer and a short screw. And this is just an Allen driver. It's the same. It's exactly the same as using something like this. It's just an Allen screwdriver, so it just makes it easier to put them in. Started, but do not snug these down because these are going to move. Okay. I've already mounted this one. It mounts the same way. You can see the high side goes towards the actual linear actuator, and it's two screws, two flat washers. So now we get our actuator, one of our pull pins, and mount the actuator in the motor end as such. This end here, if you have trouble, if it doesn't line up, if the holes don't line up, you can just take a tool and rotate until it fits. Just like that. So we put them in place. Now what I want to do is I want to get this projector into the lens position. Now I've still got my stop block in place from the sliders, from the real D slider. So that tells me my lens position. So what I'm going to do is slide over until I hit my stop. It's there. And then I want to snug things down. Before I go too far, though, I want to make sure the motor is in alignment with this rail, and I want to make sure this rail is roughly square on here. So it is, it is now, so we'll do that. Let's tighten up the screws. Now, you can't do all the motor screws because two of them are hidden. So we have to remove the motor to attach those screws. So what we'll do is, the motor's in place, we got solidly in place. We're gonna snug down the two outside screws for the motor and I'm gonna snug down these two guys here to hold this piece of rail in place. And again, the outside screw for the motor. And then that holds my position in place so that I can take this out and tighten up this inside screw that you can't get too easily. Now I can put that one in and snug it down. And this one over here, I've got to do the exact opposite. I'm going to take this side of the motor out and get this screw in place. And snug it down. Okay. Motor back. Pull, pin, pull pins back in again. If they ever do have an emergency where something dies in the system, you can just leave this pin in place. We can just pull this pin out, pull the actual pin up and leave it like this, and then they can just go back to manual function. <clears throat> so. Okay, I noticed I hadn't tightened these guys up, so we'll give them a tight at the same time. Good. So now my rail is held down, the 90s are held down, the rail is bolted in to the 90s, so it's firm. The two more T nuts in the front end here. Just the shorter screws. If you're, uh, if you have some obstructions, you can't possibly mount the uh, the control box like this. You can mount it wherever you like. We just found this is a convenient location. But you can have the box sitting under the projector if you chose to, and you wouldn't have to have it tied up here at all. such a situation where your motor's stretched too tight like this. So that would reach, but it's too tight, so you're going to put too much strain on the cable, and you don't want to have it up here like this, because it's going to get caught as the motor moves. So be aware of your, uh, of your alignment, of your position, and find the best place to mount your motor. 
Now I'm just going to tack it along the back of the uh, T-slot rail here because this is, I can tie it in here with some cable ties. It's safe enough and out of the way. Okay. 